Bash. Thank you very much, Riv. Yeah, we got a few comments on that game. Team uh, T S. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, TSM, man. I mean, wiping the floor uh, yeah. with Team Liquid in that first game there. Uh, after a somewhat slow start, eight minute mark though. Even they break it open with quick going to that mid lane, uh, setting yeah. Bjergsen up for success both in this series as well as the series that we saw against CLG. Definitely putting a lot of focus into that mid lane. Yeah, people are going to point out, oh, it's just TSM. They're camping mid again. Everybody. Bjergsen is pushing up this turret every time. Bjergsen's doing the first part of the work where he's getting lane control, he has kill pressure, he's weakening the opponent. R then they set him up and everybody converges. Right, there's a difference between having a, a play style yeah. and like forcing it and having a play style and doing it well. And I think that's the difference between the two teams is like TL has a bot-centric play style and they're over-forcing it mm -hmm. and TSM is a more mid-centric one, but you still see Sven really impacting top lane and bot lane and these other things but, you know, it all kind of starting through mid. Yeah, I mean, in uh, the CLG series that we saw on Friday, they were actually executing this even a little bit sooner, as soon as he hit level 6, being able to capitalize on the level 5 of Huhi. Here, though, waiting for Ryze to hit that level 6, using his ultimate to clear the wave, and push it up to turret here, and this is the aftermath now. Nivea, no escape as both Hauntzer and Svenskaren show up. Yeah, they yeah. Oh, sorry. They're between two turrets. They get the dive. It's pretty clean. Hauntzer has already had a lead that Sven helped him get, and then Moon just walks up here, and there's no reason to. Like, the wave's already dead. The turret's not going to go down, and he just sets himself up for, to hand over another kill. Yeah, that, ex that extra kill right there is a really big snowball kill, actually, because that was a very avoidable death right there, and they weren't going to get much more turret damage. Like, the minion wave had timed out anyway, um, so that was unnecessary, but it definitely is worth noting. Hauntzer is also a huge tool that they're using. It's not just Bjergsen, right. mid lane, you know, TSM, mid lane team. Uh, Hauntzer, Lorlo, he beat Lorlo a little bit, but then Lorlo also teleported bottom, so there's this huge CS discrepancy, and then the Echo has complete control of the lane, allowing for more people, not just Sven, to go mid. Yeah, that's kind of where I wanted to go next, was that contrast between TSM and Team Liquid, and that TSM throwing a little bit of focus mid, Team Liquid ton of focus in that bot lane. We did see Piglet and mm -hmm. Matt out trading the likes of Doublelift and Biofrost in those earlier levels, getting a slight advantage. But as you mentioned, the, the TP down, the turret dives coming through for Team Liquid, they're definitely putting a lot of resources into getting Piglet off the ground. It's just not working out for them. They're not able to transition it, you know, into the mid game. It's kind of what we said, like the forcing it aspect of it. Like, they're already winning, and then they go for, like, these dives where... Like, they're not set up that well. Like, sure, your bot lane's pushed in, but the other team has plenty of time to TP and flank, and they read it. Like, the Anivia's coming down, but Bjergsen's full health, full mana, comes in from behind, and, you know, even though the Rek'Sai isn't, isn't there, he doesn't need to be. Like, these are so telegraphed, so forced. TSM's ready for them, and they react and crush them. And it's just like a long chase down from there. They're caught in the other team's jungle. Lorlo finally gets in on that ward, and it's just, like, way too late. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the for, I, I love the word you're using in terms of forcing playstyle as opposed to, like, having the playstyle and executing it correctly, letting it evolve, and then playing it out correctly. Because that's, that's what it feels like for, for Team Liquid. They have this idea of the way we're supposed to win the game is through Piglet, it's through our bottom lane. So, again, you know, being overzealous in all their moves, trying to force the setups. Yeah, I mean, the bottom lane, their bottom lane did learn, earn some small advantages over Double Lift and Biofrost. Uh, but again, you're t you guys keep bringing it up. It's the execution, right? Uh, they force it too much, and at that point, there are too many answers from TSM. You have to be very, very cognizant of what the other lanes are doing. You can't just only tunnel vision uh, on their direct opponent. The first CP play they made, you know, you pointed it out that the Maokai had just gotten forced out of lane. Lorlo just had to blow his flash to live, went back to base, and then you're instantly forcing a play again on the bot side that, he's, that they're calling to TP in before he even really needs to be there. Like, your bot lane's winning. Mm -hmm. You don't need to force it right then. Let your Maokai get some CS, and instead he falls down to kind of give up control of the lane. As we see here, the champion select graphic coming up. We did see that Anivia come through. Wasn't enough to slow TSM down with that gold lead they had accrued, plus those couple of mountain drakes that they picked up. Definitely aided them in their pushing down of the turrets. But I do want to push this ahead to our player of the game honors, which is going to go over to Hauntzer in this game, being super disruptive in the back line on that echo. I've always been impressed by his echo play, but we saw in the top lane near the end of the game, just 1v3ing in the back line, allowing his team to kind of push up and safely uh, uh, throw their damage out. Hanser is definitely a monster, and he's going to be a monster for this whole split. I think he performed really well yesterday. Uh, I think that he's just going to have a really good year, honestly. Yeah, you see, the whole team of TSM has really come together. These mid plays are not just like Bjergsen, like solo killing. 
you know, Hoster's there, he's spreading his lead around. They're doing a good job of like, once I get ahead, I'm gonna get you ahead, so. Yeah, also I just wanna tack onto that. Their bottom lane, you know, Double Lift and Biofrost, they did get pushed out a little bit early on. They knew, okay, all we have to do is let our solo lanes carry. Hanser and Bjergsen are going to do their part. We'll wait around. Plus, they'll boost on Sivir, so they just, you know, speed boost later in the game. Just and a Sivir comp, you run know. Past everybody. <laughs> now, looking ahead to game two, a little bit of news that I get to share with everybody at home as well as you two. Dardock will be subbing in for Moon, so we have the opportunity to talk a little bit about how this changes the dynamic of Team Liquid. We did speak, I know uh, Jat's been very vocal about the fact that we, the contrast in the presence of the early game between these two junglers, Moon on energy last split, pretty lackluster in his ability to uh, affect the map early, whereas Dardock, a terror, especially on the likes of those Nidalees and Lee Sins, those early pressure junglers. Uh, I think you'll actually see more of a difference after like the first couple um, paths through the jungle. I think Dardock paths a little bit better, but Moon was still getting like involved in kills early. He was still mm -hmm. getting stuff done, but the difference will come uh, where voc uh, Dardock's really vocal in what he wants. Not necessarily shot calling, but like no, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Right. Like, that's a bad play. And he'll call things off all the time and set his team up for things that he knows will work. And I'm not sure if Moon was quite vocal on that same level. Yeah, I mean, it really does change the dynamic of a team. If you have just one person who really knows what they want and is focused, it helps everyone else focus in on the same goals. You know, if there's a lack of direction, which it looks like Team Liquid were having sort of a problem coming up with proactive plays. So hopefully for Team Liquid, this does change a lot, not just individual performance of a jungler, but also for the entire team uh, because all of them have been having issues. All right, but of course they have been practicing with Moon, so they're, they're, I'm sure some of the same uh, kind of curiosities will exist around their communication and ability to operate as well, oiled machine. Whereas TSM, they don't look to be missing a beat right now with this uh, with this roster, including Biofrost. Anyway, we have to take a quick break, but we'll be back before your flash comes off cooldown. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Depends. All right, from now on, we're not actually talking actually, this wave will catch me on this shit. about leak stuff. We're just only using memes in the game. Maybe. Oh, feels gankable mid, man. Feels gankable mid, <laughs> Oh. The bubble oh, is low. He's going to either choose to heal or bubble on this. Biofrost is low. The kill from Piglet goes over to double it for first blood. And Biofrost flashes in this instant, thinking he could save himself, but unfortunately goes down in the same instant. And here comes the TP and the wave. Oh, two flashes. Two flashes. Relentless Pursuit already used. The bubble going past. It doesn't actually miss, but it does hit Svenskaren. A bit of speed there isn't enough for the tunnel oh, to come man. back up. Oh, he's just roaming around. Oh. Piglet gets caught in the front. Piglet flashes out of that with here comes the Hunter. Witch. Matt keeps him alive. Ponser to the back line to take Piglet down immediately, even after he uses both summoners. Ponser is a beast in the back line right now.